Good morning, Clay Talkful. It's been quite a while since you've last seen us, but now we're back with our fourth season of Keeping Up with Clay Talkful. This episode, like our last one, was made by our team remotely, but don't worry, next month we'll be back in the studio. Now I'm going to hand it over to Julia with an instructional video on how to correctly wear a mask. Julia? Hey Clay Talkful, this is Julia Petty, and today I'm going to be showing you how to wear your mask for your return to school. I have Terry and Elizabeth here with me to show you the do's and don'ts of wearing your mask. Do find a mask that fits your face and isn't too big or too small. Don't pull your mask down to where it just covers your mouth. Do wear a mask where it covers your mouth and face. Don't wear your mask as a headband. Don't pull it up to where it just covers your nose. Please make sure you wear your mask correctly to keep you and others around you safe. I hope that this video was very informative on how to wear your mask next week for your return to school. Can't wait to see you. Thanks Julia for helping us stay safe. This week I had a chance to interview our newest assistant principal, Mr. Priolo. Check it out. Hi Mr. Priolo, how are you doing today? Hey, how are you doing? Let's start from the beginning. So in the 90s, you attended Tuskegee University and then Miles College. What did you major in? Uh, I was a history major at uh, Tuskegee University and at Miles College, I majored in secondary social science education. Did you always know you wanted to teach? The original plan was to be an architect. Uh, and uh, that, uh, when I got involved in the program at Tuskegee, I found out that it w was not what was advertised uh, on television, it wasn't the glamorous life that I thought it was going to be. And so my second love has always been history. And so therefore I went into um, majoring in history and then focused on being a teacher. And straight out of college, you taught at Bessemer City High School. What did you teach there? I taught uh, all four histories. I started with the uh, 10th grade. I taught that for about 15 years. Uh, the 11th grade as well. And my last two years there, I got to teach wonderful, wonderful freshmen uh, and of course our seniors. Uh, so I've had an opportunity to teach uh, all four core subjects as well as uh, several electives. Uh, and I really, truly enjoyed my time when I was there at Bessemer uh, City slash Chesla near high school. After that, you went and studied at UAB. What was your goal after obtaining your master's degree? Uh, well, uh, once that was completed, I, I really laser focused on trying to become an assistant principal uh, at a school uh, so that I could learn more and more about uh, administration and uh, how to uh, better manage people uh, and how to better uh, to reach students. Uh, so that was my main focus uh, once uh, I left UAB to also network with other uh, future administrators and those that were currently in administration to try to learn as much as I could so that I could be the most effective administrator that I thought that I could be. And where did you become an assistant principal after that? I had the wonderful opportunity uh, to serve my own community and at my own alma mater, Dora High School in Walker County. I, I was assistant principal there for five wonderful years and I got reacquainted with some classmates who had children that went to the school at that time. And also, I think there were two of my teachers that actually taught uh, me that were still currently there. And that was quite interesting, I'll tell you that. But just getting back to home and getting back to the community uh, in which I grew up, uh, it was just a, a great and wonderful experience and I'm forever indebted to uh, Dora High School and Walker County Schools for granting me that opportunity. What ideas do you hope to execute now that you're at Clay Chalkful? Well, uh, definitely to follow the plan and the leadership of our wonderful principal, Mr. Michael Lee, uh, and to fill in uh, where I can. First thing I, I wanted to do and what I have been doing is just observing to see where do I fit into the Clay Chalkful Cougar family. And then once that is fulfilled, then I can better uh, be able to find where my place is and then to be able to add and accentuate uh, what's already here, which is a good, great structure. And I just want to be the icing on the cake where I can, where I can uh, 
add to it. Thank you for sitting down with me today and answering our students' burning questions. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the interview. <laughs> so glad you gave us a chance to get to know you, Mr. P. Next, I'm going to hand it over to Chloe with a feature story on photographer Cynthia Young. Thanks, Lauren. This week, I was able to sit down and have a nice chat with a very nice lady that the Clay Chocolate community has known for years because of her exceptional work of taking thousands of pictures of athletes and students. Miss Cynthia Young. Hi, my name is Cynthia Young with Cynthia Young Photography. We started doing photography around the year 2000, so for probably about the last 20 years. Well, my son was born in 2000, so I started, obviously, once you start having kids, you start taking lots and lots of pictures. 2003, my daughter was born, and shortly thereafter, I bought my first digital camera. So in that digital age, I was able to take pictures all the time and delete as I wanted. So that's when I started getting a little bit crazy with my photography. I think I've always had a passion for photography, even before I had kids, but once I had children, then it, it obviously escalated because I wanted to capture like every single moment that they had. Um, I think really what it is is that my son was in soccer at Clay Chotville. Um, both my children have been in the Clay Chotville um, school system their entire life. It's always been there. So I've always taken photos um, of them and their teams and shared those photos with their teams. Um, and then I just kind of decided, you know, while I'm here, let me take pictures of the other kids too. So I started doing that probably especially for the high school, probably when my son started high school. And then I obviously started to continue that with my daughter when she was in cheer. And about three years ago, I took my passion for photography and turned it into a business. And I have my business license, so I am legally a uh, Cynthia Young Photography. That's where I share them now. Uh, graphics for game day, probably I started doing that as well when my daughter uh, became a uh, high school cheerleader because there was no really way to say what the theme was for the week. And I was trying to help instill that school spirit as well and get the word out about what the spirit was for that theme for that week. And also try to entice people to actually come to football games. And because I think the more people that are at the football games or at any kind of sporting event, um, I think that helps entice and excite the actual football players. Unfortunately, my daughter is a senior. So after she graduates, there won't be a reason for me to go to the football games or some of the sporting events anymore. So unfortunately, this will be my last year for taking photos of Clay students. I have taken pictures of them for probably the last eight to 10 years and watched them, a lot of kids grow up through my lens and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. But after this year, this the, that will be all that I'll be doing. We are thankful for everything she has done for us and so sad to see her go. Back to you, Lauren. Thanks, Chloe. We all know COVID-19 has changed the lives of many, but how has it changed the way athletes practice? Michaela? As you know, Corona has changed the way we play sports. I myself know that there has been many significant changes to ensure our safety. I had a chance to talk to other athletes to see how COVID guidelines have changed the way they've been practicing lately. Take a look. Hello, my name is Carly Mahoney. I am a senior this year and I am also captain of the color guard for our school. Hi, my name is Jan Michael and I'm in 12th grade and I'm the kicker slash punter for the football team. Hi, my name is Adriana Colvin and I'm the cheer captain. Hey guys! We're all here a part of the Clay Chocolate Volleyball team. My name is Lauren, I'm a senior and I'm an outside hitter. My name is Jory, I'm a senior and I'm a setter. My name is Jayla. I'm a DS and I'm also a senior. Um, so the main things of how the team and the band are adapting to new guidelines that we have is we have to complete screening forms and have our temperature taken before we can start practice every single day that we have it. Uh, we must be at least six feet apart from everyone. And if we're not, we have to have masks on at all times when we're indoors and within that six feet um, restriction of people. The team has really adapted by keeping our distance from each other and the people outside the school. Practice really hasn't changed much since we're outside and we can stay apart from each other. This year, I really don't feel a lot different. 
I, I, I've missed out on my friends a lot, but other than that, school has been harder just from being online and just keep, keep me up with all my things, but it's pretty, other than that. I've been dealing with it by FaceTiming more and playing Xbox with my friends more. Keeping up with each other is a big thing to help, help this year out. So far, I felt a little down about my senior year and how it's turned out, but I feel like it, it can change pretty soon. My team has adapted to the new guidelines by staying six feet apart at practice and wearing masks before and after practice. Some things that are different in practice, we currently aren't stunting or tumbling due to COVID restrictions. My senior year is very different than how I thought it would be, but at this point, I'm just thankful to have football. <laughs> it's been sad at times when everything started to get canceled because I've looked forward to being a senior for a long time, but I know it's for the best. We're here today to answer a few questions for you guys. The first one is, how has your team adjusted to the new guidelines y'all have to follow due to COVID? Um, nothing much has changed. We just wear masks everywhere we go. Um, the second one is, what are some changes or things that are different in practice due to COVID? Uh, we just have to make sure that we take, you know, the proper safety precautions to make sure that everybody else around us and that we as a whole are safe and sanitize as much as possible. Um, and the last one is, since we are seniors, how has this affected our senior year and how does it make us feel? Um, we are extremely grateful that we have made it to this point of the season because it was very possible that we weren't going to have a season. But we are extremely grateful that we're almost at the end. And, uh, you know, we're just happy that we were able to participate this season. Thanks, Michaela. CC and TV had the chance to work with PBS Student Reporting Labs to make video diaries about how COVID-19 has changed our school routine. Check it out. Hello, my name is Terry Jones Jr. and I am 17 and I am a student at Clay Chalkville High School. Due to this pandemic, school has changed drastically. I mean, I would have never imagined my senior year turning out quite like this. So, to be on the safe side, I am currently doing school remotely due to COVID-19. Now, remotely means that I am doing school from home. This has brought on many different challenges because I'm used to doing traditional school. What a normal school day looked like for me before the pandemic looks totally different now. Instead of hopping in the car, and being on my way to school, I go to my room and I get prepared for school, which is really different. And it lacks that human interaction between teachers and classmates. And as opposed to being in the classroom and having that physical interaction, I'm in my room alone, just me, with my bed right there. And I might get the urge to just be like, oh, well, maybe I should just go hop in that bed and go to sleep, but you can't do that. And that is where responsibility comes into play and it made me realize how responsibility plays an important role in remote learning. Now I will say that doing remote learning does have benefits. I may get to sleep in a little longer or work at my own pace but while there are pros I still find it hard working in the comfort of my home. Now at the end of the school day I sometimes feel overwhelmed because there's so many places to look for work and I may feel like I missed out on something. But when I feel overwhelmed, I feel like it's important to step away and do something I love, like maybe dance or listen to music or draw or just do pretty much anything to make me keep my sanity. Because I believe that mental health is very important in these times. Of course, I want to be optimistic because this is my senior year and this year is very important because it's your last year and you just really want to spend that time at school, but you can't right now. And I do believe that things will get better. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Lauren Waters. I am a senior at Clay Chalkville High School in Pinson, Alabama. My alarm goes off at 830 and I usually get up around 9. I then go to the kitchen and make myself breakfast, usually some oatmeal, drink some coffee. Before quarantine, I had to be at school at 7.45. My first class started at 7.55, but now that quarantine happened, my first class starts at 9.30. My county has decided to go completely online for the first nine weeks. They provided Chromebooks to every student that needed one. Before the pandemic, school looked like how it always has. 
first bell rang at 7.45 and we went to homeroom. We were in class with our teachers and fellow students and without mask and we were not six feet apart. But now that we're completely online, I actually prefer online school to regular school. I can get to my assignments easily. I can't lose them or leave them at home. It's actually really simple. Hi, my name is Franco Dari. I'm in the 12th grade at Clay Chaffa High School, and I'll be telling you my experience with remote learning. With school now starting, remote learning has been very difficult for me. In fact, it has been very difficult for all of us. Um, I would normally wake up in the morning at like five to wake my brother up to take him to work. And by the time I get home, it's time for me to eat breakfast and then get ready for school. Um, so I start by logging on to WebEx and sometimes my internet connection really isn't that good. So I can barely hear what the teacher is saying, which makes it kind of a little bit difficult. And as time goes on, it's it gets easier by the minute. It just takes a while because once again, we're not in school and we're trying something new. We can't use Google Classroom. Honestly, I feel like Google Classroom will work better for me because I'm so familiar with it. But it's something that I'm just going to have to deal with until school starts back, which I kind of hope starts back soon because I'm not really liking remote learnings. Normally, how I would control my mental state is normally me and my friends will always make a group chat on Snapchat or instagram mostly snapchat because i'm always on snapchat and we will like talk i have most of my classes with my friends which is kind of good because it's my senior year and i kind of want to like you know relax and get this whole pandemic over with so basically we will create a group chat and um spread like give our opinion on remote learning and how it's really helping us or like not helping us and some of us kind of like it, some others don't. I just feel like we need to get used to it for now until we can go back to school. I wanted to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Abby Gillette, for doing her best and supporting us while learning remotely. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chapel. Have a great day, CCHS.